Hello and welcome to the Connection podcast series. I'm delighted to welcome Dave Stutler. Dave is the VP and General Manager of Vortex. And uh, today we're going to be looking at a uh, getting technical session, um, specifically revolving around uh, the use of starch in uh, the modern uh, corrugated box plant. Um, so, Dave, I'd, I'd like to sort of uh, um, start off the session by, um, you know, looking at some of the um, the issues that the industry is facing, uh, particularly as we're all looking at sustainability. Uh, we're looking to reduce uh, waste in the corrugated board making process, and we're also looking at cost cost savings. So. Um, obviously, the big move at the moment uh, in, in Europe, Middle East, and, and starting to come to the States in a big way is obviously lighter weight papers, um, finer flutes, uh, and obviously recycled liners. So, um, Dave, tell us why starch mixing is so important. Well, with the advent of lighter board and more flutes, uh, it has increased the demand on the starch kitchens uh, in terms of the quantity of the adhesive that's required. More flutes require more adhesive. Um, basically, with that in mind, uh, we looked at the future and said, this is what's potentially going to occur and developed equipment to uh, accommodate the increased demands. And um, Dave, it's quite interesting because you know when you look at um, you know a lot of box plants around the world, you know that they've got the big line item numbers with you know the full line corrugators. Um, why do you think it is that um, the starch kitchen tends to be right at the bottom of the list? Why is it always the last thing that's looked at? I think initially uh, it was that it wasn't the bottleneck. It wasn't the thing that was prohibiting speed. It wasn't the item that they couldn't uh, augment by having um, additional chemicals and, and additional costs. Uh, and so it was overlooked, so to speak. Now it's the bottleneck. In other words, uh, we're getting wider machines, we're getting uh, faster machines. And to get those speeds and that it now has an importance in terms of what are the costs of the adhesive. And, and so um, you, you mentioned there, obviously, corrugators getting, you know, wider, they're getting faster. Um, so, I mean, let, let's start looking at the, the actual, um, you know, the whole starch um, production process. I mean, um, do, do you feel that um, there's still an element of um, uh, education that needs to be given to, to some of these box plants as they step up from, you know, the narrower corrugators, the more traditional corrugators, moving to these high volume, high speed machines? Yes, I, I, I really do. I think that, that uh, we're seeing uh, a process of, we're trying to take it from uh, an art, so to speak, into a science. And the education is occurring by using SPC programs to identify uh, improvement areas. And that's what we're seeing, uh, the proliferation of the starch kitchen and then the um, use of additional components and so forth to improve the, the numbers coming off the corrugator. And, and have there been any um, sort of specific findings from your side in terms of you know when people are transitioning from uh, craft liners onto recycled liners um, surely there, there has to be some modifications in in the actual starch recipe itself uh, most definitely uh, and we're also seeing uh, different starches being used from uh, wheat starch pea starch uh, tapioca so it's a worldwide it really starch is just simply a, a, a mechanism or a polymer to uh, combine the boards. Basically, what we're seeing is what is what are the economics in that particular region or area. Um, and we're seeing different starches used. We're also seeing that the different papers um, are uh, creating other opportunities in terms of uh, what can we do to improve those numbers. 
and uh, obviously in, in that part of the conversation day but we could be looking at um you know additives you know there's an awful lot of development taking place with with some of the specialty uh, chemical uh, companies um, talk us through what's been going on um in, in that part of the process uh, I'd like to be able to be full disclosure to you, but unfortunately I can't at this time because we are working with a number of companies that are developing some very exciting things that, that may reshape the corrugating industry very, very shortly. But I will tell you that, yes, um, there are things that can be done to the base formula uh, using additives and so forth that will improve uh, the thermal characteristics of the starch. It may improve the uh, permeability of the starch or how it dives into the paper and attaches itself. There's a number of things that the starch companies are developing and it's almost like they've taken the, the blinders off and said, hey, we have all these um, options that we can look at and let's develop the products uh, that will satisfy the future. And that, for example, uh, fine flute, e flute, and things like that, uh, trying to run that very fast uh, presents separate opportunities for them. And the economics change then when you start to, to run those kind of uh, uh, special papers and special flute profiles. And, um, you know, when we start talking about, um, you know, the modern corrugated box plant where uh, they might be running, um, you know, 10 or 12, um, you know, grade changes per day. Uh, obviously, the, the actual setup of the, the modern starch kitchen, I mean, has to be tied in with the, you know, the estimating and the um, scheduling systems, etc. So, um, you know, what work are you doing with uh, the actual OEMs and the software providers themselves to, uh, you know, to ensure that that data transfer is there? Well, certainly the flexibility of the um, machinery is paramount to being able to uh, put the right chemistry on the machine at the time they need it. For example, they are increasing the number of uh, grade changes and the scheduling systems are based on uh, an algorithm that may have uh, width versus waterproof versus uh, different flute profiles. So the, the randomness of the scheduling has increased uh, to get the best economics, simply put. And, um, you know, when we we're also talking about um, you know, the, the, the fine flutes and we're looking at the really ultra lightweight recycled papers, particularly that we're, we're tending to see being used in Europe at the moment. Um, I, I was interested uh, in, in reading about your latest uh, development, um, the, the F3, uh, to, which is your Tornado uh, product. Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, some of the background changes that have taken place in your systems over the last uh, 18 months or so. I think one of the, the largest uh, things that we've seen occurring is uh, basically two things. We've gotten uh, much higher volumes, but we've also uh, increased the flexibility or the delivery systems out at the corrugator. And we're now seeing just about almost every modern corrugator that, that we've been working with, um, the um, use of use tanks or run tanks at the corrugator. Now that does two things for them. That gives them the ability to control the thermal characteristics of the adhesive, which equates to application, but it also uh, gives us the ability to put specialty uh, chemicals or products in at the corrugator on demand with a short amount of, of time so that it doesn't uh, lock down the scheduling system, so to speak. And um, the, the latest generation, uh, the, the F3 Tornado, um, how many have you got in and running uh, right now, Dave? Uh, roughly 300. Okay. And, and, and the general feedback in terms of, 
are you able to sort of put a figure on this in terms of, you know, what's the return on investment for a box plant? Well, I'd love to tell you that they're nine months or less, but uh, I think the industry standard that we're seeing is, uh, can we get a payback within a, about a 16 to 18 month period? And uh, um, we've been very successful in doing that. And um, Dave, just to sort of uh, finish off, I mean, if we were to, to look into the crystal ball, um, you know, let's look to the future. Well, what can the industry expect um, to see coming over the, the next 12, 24, 36 months? Well, I, I think that the specialty chemical groups are going to develop some interesting things in the very near future. Um, and that may change the overall um, view of starch. Uh, but more importantly, uh, do they have the equipment in place to allow for those kind of uh, items to occur? In other words, how do I deliver this out at the corrugator uh, on a real-time basis for whatever they're running? Because uh, if it's a standard brown box and there's nothing that it's special about the uh, performance liners or anything like that. The economics aren't to, there to uh, put all these chemicals in there, but if they need them and they can run these. In other words, what we look at is should they, um, should they be using those? Some people say, hey, I'll just use it for everything, but the economics aren't there. What we're trying to do is develop equipment that uh, will give them that flexibility to turn it on and off uh, whenever they need to and keep those economics. So they're turning, uh, the, the starch people are turning the thing from a art to more of a science. And that's what we have to position ourselves to do. And um, just thinking about the, um, the additives and, and the, the chemicals uh, that are being put into the starch right now, I mean, um, obviously, is it safe to say that that will not have any impact on the recyclability of the, the finished box? That's being considered as the chemicals are being developed. Um, I, you know, they're, they're making sure that the recyclability of the components will be there also. Well, um, Dave, thank you so much indeed. Um, it's been absolutely fascinating uh, talking to you. Um, obviously, as, as we said at the beginning, you know, sustainability, um, the recyclability of, of the board is so important. Um, and of course, as corrugators get wider and faster, uh, lighter weight papers, finer flutes, um, the actual mixing of the starch has probably never been more important than it is today. So um, Dave Stockler, thank you ever so much indeed. Wonderful having you with us. My pleasure and thank you very much.